Dennis Bornick from WAPReview.com here with a quick overview of the Nokia N9 browser. The browser is based on the latest WebKit core and it features uh, very good HTML5 compliance. It uh, supports geolocation and local storage. It has a very fast JavaScript parser based on some benchmarks I've run. And it's generally a very capable browser that loads pages quickly and renders almost all pages very well with good usability. So let's take a look at it. When you first launch the browser, this top sites homepage appears. This is not history. It's a list of, well, sort of a tag cloud of your most, the sites you visit the most. And these aren't deep links into individual pages, but they're levels to top level, they're shortcuts to top level domains. So let's open up WAP Review and take a quick look here. It's a big page, and I'm on a fairly slow uh, one gigabyte, one megabyte per second uh, DSL connection. So that loaded within maybe five seconds. That's not bad at all. And as I mentioned, this is a fairly long page. There is some, there's some tendency toward checkerboarding when you scroll fast. We saw it briefly there, but it's, it's, it's pretty minor. And it usually uh, goes away and, and the text and images appear pretty much instantly as you scroll. And then once you've done, once you've loaded the whole page once, you can scroll up and down. Uh, you can double tap to zoom in. And uh, on most pages, the text is quite readable at the default zoom level where it's fit to the page width. It, and if it's not, you can also, if the text is too small, if you flip the phone into landscape mode, the uh, font gets larger and still fits the uh, column still fit the uh, window width. So that's a good way to see sites that use kind of a small font. Although actually I'd prefer to keep browsing in portrait mode and this is one area where the browser is a little limited. You can zoom in and make the text as large as you want, but unlike, for example, the Android browser or Opera Mobile, the text does not reflow when you zoom. So you have to scroll from side to side across each line in order to read everything. I find a little annoying, but I can live with it because at least most of the time the, the uh, page text is large enough to read. It's a very uh, clean, simple interface to the browser. There are no uh, semi-transparent buttons at the bottom to get in the way. There's no scroll bar. The only real uh, browser Chrome is this toolbar with the combined URL and search box here, a reload button, and a menu button. And the menu has only four items. Open new window, which opens another new window with the shortcuts page, top site shortcut page. Share this page, which lets you share the URL on Facebook, Twitter, or by text message or mail. When you when you share to text message or mail, uh, the the message is includes the page title as well as the URL. With Twitter and Facebook, it's just the URL. Like for Twitter especially, I wish it would put in the uh, page title as well because I like to use that as a basis of a tweet. The other menu function is subscribe to feed which lets you add the feed to the N9's built-in feed reader and it also lets you display feeds on the events home screen which is over here. Here's the events home screen which is currently showing mostly Twitter uh, my Twitter uh, timeline, but we can hide Twitter. And now we see mostly Facebook. So we'll hide Facebook. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. And now you see uh, some feeds from Reuters, Engadget, BBC News. So it's kind of a nice feature. The event screen 
shows me I have an email and a bunch of uh, feed items and also some Twitter and Facebook items. Back to the browser. There are two other menus. If you do a long press on a URL, you get the opportunity to open the URL in a new window, share the link uh, to the same four services, or copy the link to the system clipboard to paste it into another browser or an editor or note. If you long press an image, you get this image is actually um, got a link tied to it. So you get the, the option to open the link in a new window, share the link, copy the link. And then there are three image specific choices, share to save to gallery, which saves it in the N9's uh, image gallery, open the image in a new window or share the image. That's pretty much it for the user interface and the menu system in the N9 browser. Um, as I said, I, I really like this browser. It's very fast and the rendering quality is good. There are a few things that seem to be missing. It almost looks as if the designers, uh, rather the uh, developers of the browser ran out of time and left out some features in order to get the N9 out the door this year. For example, if we go to Dabber, which is a very good mobile web app for Twitter, and one thing I like about Dabber is it features the, uh, the ability to do editable retweets, which I prefer over the new Twitter style retweets that you can't edit or add anything to. Because I like to add a little something to when I retweet. And normally this this box here, this is the the uh, item the tweet I'm I'm trying to retweet. Normally in mo in most browsers you can scroll within this browser and enter and add text. You can add text here, but only to the first three lines because you can't get down any further. So that really makes it very challenging to do an editable retweet. And where this really bites you is in uh, trying to edit a blog post in the WAP review WordPress dashboard or the blogger dashboard because the same thing happens there. The edit window is pretty small. It's bigger than this, but it's still pretty small compared with the size of most posts. And you can't scroll much past the first paragraph. So I'm really hoping they add the ability to scroll text areas. Another thing that's missing here is you cannot copy or paste. There's no context menu, unlike the URL bar and most other fields in the browser where you do a long press and you get a uh, this little magnifying glass thing let's move the cursor around anywhere you want and if you select some text you can copy or cut it and if you have something in the paste buffer you can paste it in there let's copy this just so i can show you that and then see now you can paste but um no such uh, option in uh, in fields within the browser text uh, entry fields or text areas are missing the ability to paste. So I, I do miss that. There's a, another thing that's missing is uh, history. There's no browser history. And there's no flash support either. That doesn't really bother me, but it bothers a lot of people. And another thing that's pretty annoying is the lack of support for file uploads. From within a web form. find a site that lets you upload files. Here we go. This is Quick File Share Mobile, QFS.mobi. This is a, a mobile friendly equivalent to sites like RapidShare. 
It's uh, formatted for mobile. In addition, unlike Rapid Share, it doesn't have a, a countdown timer and there's no capture code you have to enter uh, or any other things that get in the way of just choosing a file and uploading it. So that you, and when you upload a file, it stays on the server for 30 days and you get a URL that you can share with your friends so they, you can upload things, images or apps and they can download them. So normally in QFS Mobi, when you tap close choose file it, in, in every other browser except this one, it brings up a, uh, a file explorer and lets you pick a file and then you can hit upload. But that doesn't work, of course. The, it says here, please select a file to upload, but we can't. So that that's flat out doesn't work. It's another basic browser feature that I hope is added soon. So that's pretty much a wrap on the uh, features, including the missing features of the N9 browser. This is Dennis Bernick at WAPReview.com. If you have any questions about the N9 browser, leave a comment and I'll do my best to answer it.